Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Near Replicant. Last time we left off, we did some things in the Forest of Myth, did a lot of reading, it was a weird video, along with being a weird chapter. And today I noticed we had something in our mailbox. Today was awesome, Popola made me this huge cake that was really yummy, and everyone in the village has been wishing me happy birthday. It's fun, I feel like a princess or something. I don't feel sick at all today. In fact, I almost forgot I had this disease. So maybe you forget about it too and come back home now? Oh, Riona. <laughs> it's rough, I say, as I don't go back home to her like she asked, but I don't think she would say anything new, so. Let's just go. Um, so I did the fishing, and uh, my friend's been playing this game alongside me. And, um, if I ever have any questions, I, uh, ask him, and apparently this is the last Fisherman's Gambit quest for now, so we can go ahead and turn this in. Uh, I do think I also possibly missed something, uh, back here. And, uh, I did check on the weapons that we need. I need one more weapon that, uh, we can't- it's missable, but, uh, hopefully I don't miss it. Be nice. So, yeah. I should have grabbed the boar. Wait, there's not one in here? There's not one on this side? Maybe it was back there further. Oh no, it's right here. Hey, bud. Alright, let's get out of here. Bum, bum, ba, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. Alright. So, yeah, we gotta go to the seafront. Turn in that quest. I think there's also some follow-up quests with the lighthouse lady that we've missed. I'm not sure where you accept them though. Maybe maybe Devila gives it to you or something? I I'm not sure. But uh I think there's more quests with the lighthouse lady. Which we may do, but uh mostly what I wanna do is um I wanna do go do the two quests in the Force of Myths now. <clears throat> The ones that we ignored yesterday. Because, uh, I was tired of doing those kinds of quests. Alright, so... Oh, hi. Oh, you're the person I actually have to talk to. Yeah, I forgot, we have to go to Seafront for the main story, too. Yeah, well, we'll get to you in a second, man. Alright. I'm back with those fish, Pops. The main sail and call me Cletus. That's some nice work, youngster. Keep it up, and you just might have a chance of catching the fish. Which fish? Perhaps the day will come when I tell you. Now, let me show you the next technique. I have noticed that uh, sometimes when I'm fishing, my line just breaks immediately. So I'm guessing that's like a really big fish. Different level now, you wee minnow. Don't you agree? Oh, I've certainly improved. But I still feel like your training is way harder than it needs to be. Ain't no shortcuts in life, son. Fisherman's Gambit's part five. Yup, he has no more quests for now. <laughs> Here we are, a stone's throw from the ocean. Not a single man in town knows how to fish properly. All right, so yep, that's it for now, I suppose. Ooh, a starfish. Thank you, Mr. Starfish. So I want to look around really quickly and see if I can find like a side quest over here. Aha, there's one. Yeah, because we, ha we haven't really checked this side of seafront that much, to be fair. Oh, there's two. Hey, are you the kid who ran away from home? Are you a wizard? Huh? Oh man, how'd you- Your father's worried sick about you. Why'd you leave anyway? Because he wants me to like, take up the family business. And I ain't doing it, man. I'm a rebel. Yes, we can see that. Well, perhaps you should let your father know that you're alive and well, and also explain to him why you left. Oh man, why do people always gotta hassle me? Yeah, alright, I'll do it. But first, you gotta do something for me, man. The guy who runs the tavern's been helping me since I got here. And I want to give him something nice. I was thinking I could, like, 
cook dinner or something, but I don't have any ingredients or whatever, so yeah. If it'll get you back home to your father sooner, then fine, I'll help. What do you need? This guy, man, he don't eat nothing but fish all the time, every day. Fish, fish, fish. So I was thinking he might like want to try eating meat or whatever, you know, for a change. So could you get me like five pieces of mutton and three pieces of goat meat? I could find the pans and spoons and stuff, so just bring the meat to his place whenever, man. Looks like we've got everything the runaway kid asked for. Let's go make the delivery. Okay, well that was easy. What about you? You seem to be in good spirits. <clears throat> oh, I am. My new flower shop is already far more successful than I ever dreamed. Really? Well, great. I was in trouble before. But I think I've got a good foundation here. In fact, I want to ask my girlfriend in the area to come live with me here. That's the least I can do after all I put her through. Wow, that's a long distance relationship. The only problem is I don't really have time to go all the way over there. So I was thinking of sending a letter instead. Sounds like it's time sensitive. Want me to deliver it for you? Oh, really? Are you sure? Oh, he is sure. This lad loves nothing more than meddling in other people's affairs. Excellent. Well, my girlfriend lives near the chief's house. Give her this Frigia with the letter, okay? I really wanted to give her a lunar tear. But as I'm sure you know, the whole reason they call them legendary is that they're so hard to cultivate. But I did manage to cultivate a Frigia. She's always liked Frigias. So I guess things turned out for the best. Cultivating lunar tears must require a remarkable amount of work. Yeah, even so. It's nice that guy works so hard to be able to invite his girlfriend out to join him. Now, All right. <clears throat> and with that, what's but up? who can say if said girlfriend honestly wanted to wait? What do you mean? Surely the woman desired to live with him, did she not? Well, probably, yeah. But he wasn't able to make it happen. That's why he left her in the village. It would have been difficult, yes, but perhaps preferable to a life of solitude. Why did they not think about how much time and distance would separate them? It doesn't matter anymore. They'll be able to see each other just fine soon enough. Let us hope this is the case. Ah, just the kid I was looking for. What's up? I've got a letter for the lighthouse lady, and I was hoping you could deliver it. The other postmen, well, they don't really want to deal with her. You don't say. I'd do it myself, but... With my bad leg and all. Anyway, sorry to keep bugging you, but can you help? Sure. Sure thing. The lady hardly ever leaves that lighthouse, so you should start there. Oh, and thank you. Okay, so we got another side quest for the lady in the lighthouse. <laughs> How dare he boss us around? It's okay, Vice. At least we're helping people. Ah, you are far too soft. And you're just a cranky old man. Book. <laughs> a cranky old book. Alright, so now we gotta go over here and deliver this to her. Uh, oh yeah, we can also go in here and deliver this stuff for the, uh, party or whatever. I'm glad I already had all the stuff for that. Hi, are you the guy who's taking care of that runaway? Runaway? What are you talking about? <sighs> It would seem we've been bamboozled. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Seriously? Uh, still, I guess we can tell his father he's alive at least. <laughs> wow, we got duped hard. Okay, well, we'll go turn that in later. For now, we gotta go up here. And go see what the lighthouse lady's up to. And then we can continue the main story before we leave this place. If I ever need to get more cash, too, um, I've been told the fish that I've been catching apparently are sold for a lot of money, so... That wouldn't be a bad way to, uh, get money if I ever need it now. I did talk to you, right? Hey, guess what? I went shopping with my girl a little while back. You mean the one who only goes to super expensive places? That's her, all right. Anyway, there was this nice accessory that I thought would look great on her and didn't cost much, so I bought it for her, but she refused to take it. She said she doesn't wear cheap accessories. Well, that's not too surprising. Yeah, I should have known better than to try and impress her with such shabby flim flam. 
next time, I'll get something high class all the way. It'll cost twice my yearly salary. No, three times! Come on, man. Don't be taken advantage of like that. Are you certain this woman <clears throat> even cares for you? Of course she does. You humans certainly have complex and exhausting mating rituals. Yeah. Poor dude. It's kind of his fault, though. But we don't know the entire situation. Maybe they are actually in love. She just happens to like expensive things. I still think if you love someone, though, and they got you something, you would cherish it because it was from them, not because of the price on it. Whatever. Hello, lighthouse lady. It'd be kind of cool to live in a place like this. I don't know how she got all this furniture up here, though. That must have been a pain. <clears throat> oh, you again. Are you all right? You took so much time delivering the mail, my illness has gotten worse. I'm lucky I'm not dead. You truly are a staggering creature. Well, since you're here, I guess I should give you a little something. Whoa, I, I can't accept this much. It's fine, just take it. Take it and go. But bring the mail quicker next time. And I want to see a smile. Is there no end to this madness? There we go. Wow, she, uh, apparently has some money. If you heard anything weird during that, I was, a, I was adjusting my headphones. Bum, 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 bum. Well, there we go. We're wrapping up a lot of the side quests that, uh, <clears throat> had kind of been piling up, I guess. Can we just jump down? I don't think so. Here? Oh, we might be able to. No. Doesn't let us. It's like, nope, you're not allowed to do that. You're pushing your luck, Sonny. Fine. I'll go the long way. Okay. What do we got? Aha, shiny. I don't know if I'll ever need this stuff, but I might as well collect it, right? You know, I might need starfish. Something or another. It's so hard to see anything on the beach. <laughs> It's just so bright. Uh, alright. So, I just want to check my other quests. Letter to a lover. Uh, and the airy. Uh, yeah, I still need all that shit. And the runaway sun. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, uh, are you the guy who's supposed to help repair the canal? Popola sent me to... Oh god, it's over. My life is over! Surely you must realize nothing good can come of being involved with this particular endeavor. Easy, Vice. Hey, so, are you alright? What happened? It's my wife. She left home a week ago and hasn't come back. I'm so worried I can't even focus on my work. Oh, my sweet dumpling, where are you? It's terrible. Would you like us to help you look for her? Really? You do that for me? Sure. Er, but do you have any idea where we should start? Hmm. Well, she always used to enjoy drinking at the tavern with her friends. All right, then I guess we'll start with them. Thank you. This means the world to me. Oh, and by the way, my wife always carries a red bag, just like mine. If you mention that, it might ring some bells. I've met some odd couples in my day, but none who felt the need to wander about flaunting matching luggage. <laughs> you need to get with the times. Coordinated outfits are all the rage. Plus, these bags are special. We bought them for our anniversary. But now my sweet dumpling is gone. <laughs> and it's all my fault. Okay. okay, okay, just stay calm. We'll go look for her, all right? You sit tight. All right, thank you. I'm willing I... to bet that man knows more about his wife absconding than he's letting on. You really do like the word absconding, don't you, Vice? Is it you? Hey there, I'm, uh, looking for a woman carrying a red bag. Are you now? Interesting. Did something happen to her? She hasn't been home and her husband's worried. Do you know anything about where she might be? 
<laughs> Trouble in paradise, is it? Oh, those two never change. Anyway, the short answer is no. She hasn't been around here, either. Though, come to think of it, she always got on well with the woman over at the tackle shop. Maybe you should try her? I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, what's the rush? You've got a cute face. Why not sit here and join me for a round? Or three? Uh, I don't know how old Nier is, lady, but back off, creep. Uh, sorry, ma'am, but I'm not old enough to drink. Well, he's not old enough to drink, so he's probably not old enough for you, lady. Weirdo. Alright. What's up, tackle shop lady? Hey there. Do you know a woman with a red bag by any chance? A red bag? Oh, sure. Although now that I think about it, I haven't seen her in a while. Last time she came around, she mentioned something about leaving town. But I figured it was just idle talk. I like recognize this voice. My first thought was that it's just y the voice actor for Yona, but doing like a more grown-up voice. Leaving town, huh? All right, thanks for your time. We're gonna She's find a dead one. Left this charming hamlet, finding her may prove most difficult indeed. I just hope she hasn't been attacked by shades or anything. That's what I was thinking was ha was going to happen. She was going to be dead from shades. All right, we're back out here. Don't forget the boar. There we go, he's hiding over here. He's like, I don't want to be ridden. Ooh, something here. She's possibly being attacked by this giant uh, shade over here. Ah. Hmm, something about that shade seems rather... Odd. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hi. Uh oh. Hey, look at this. It is identical to the red satchel carried by the man who sent us on this mad quest. Perhaps it belongs to his spouse. Oh no. Do you think the shades got her? Or she was the shade. I fear it likely, lad. I sense no other activity in the immediate vicinity. We were too late. Well, this is terrible. What are we supposed to say? However difficult it may be, we've no choice but to tell the man the truth. All right. Oh, I can uh, hit up some easy collection points here because the big lad isn't here right now. No big boy to worry about. Alright, so yeah, let's get out of here. I'm not running all the way down there to that one. I'm too lazy. Look at my big boar. My big boar baby. Come on, big guy. I love that you just ride boars in this game. I think you can also ride them in Niramata as well. Uh, or Niramata is what I call it. No, Nier Automata. Um, I think you can ride them in that, in, in that game as well. Although I don't think I did it as much in Automata, for whatever reason. Did kind of just run up the wall? What was that? What was that? I swear I swear I just saw Kaine run up the wall. Kaine, why? Why would you do such a thing? Alright, so down here. Hey man. Hey! Did you find my sweet dumpling? We didn't, but we got this off a of shade. This... this is hers. So our fears were correct. Oh god. How could this happen to her? <laughs> this is all my fault. Why is this all his fault? Asked the man. If I may, my good man, why did your wife leave home in the first place? <laughs> it's because... because I... I think we should give him some time to himself, Vice. You're not dead! What in the world are you talking about? Oh, 
Oh, you found my bag. Thank you so much. I can't believe I went and dropped it like that. Oh, this is such a relief. <sighs> okay, seriously. What's going on? We thought you were dead. Five minutes late there. I see. So, you found a shade with my bag and assumed I'd been attacked and killed? I'm just glad you're safe, Dumpling. But I'm also so sorry. This is all my fault. Oh, if I didn't eat that apple you were saving. Oh, God, I'm such an idiot! Oh, God. Listen, I promise I'll never eat anything of yours again. You just promise never to run away from home again, okay? Run away? Have you lost your mind? I just went to visit my parents. Huh? I told you about this. Going to see my family, gone for a week, <laughs> remember? Ugh, are you serious right now? Why don't you ever listen to me? Um... Lad, my brilliant intuition suggests we should beat a hasty retreat from these two with all speed. That's some good intuition. No, let's stick around and listen. I can't believe you didn't listen to me, and you ate my apple. I mean, we do gotta have this guy for the bridge, right? You are the absolute worst! What?! Oh, like you're some perfect angel! You didn't even care enough about our anniversary to hang onto your bag! You, kid, I'm right about this, yeah? If anyone's wrong here, it's my wife, right? Wait, you're asking me? I'm sorry, dude. You're definitely in the wrong here. You're the asshole here. The wife who lost the bag or the husband who ate the apple? Definitely the husband. Well, you shouldn't have eaten your wife's apple. That's not very nice. But I was hungry, and it was just sitting there. Look, I'm glad you went looking for my wife and all, but that was low, friend. Low. Uh-oh. Did I cross a line there? Besides, it's pretty rich to come after me for an apple when you threw away my entire stamp collection. Ha! You're damn right I did, and I'd do it again. You are nothing but a hoarding slob. Oh god. There. My husband's in the wrong here, isn't he? Uh, pardon, but madam, I... A hoarding slob of a husband, the collection tossing wife. Honestly, both of them. At this point, why would she toss his entire stamp collection? Well, in this particular case, though, it's not both of them. It's the collection tossing wife. Well, uh, to discard a man's precious hobby is a rather heinous act. Oh, oh, yeah, of course you to take his side. Figures, you'd fit right in with his pile of collectible trash. Collectible trash? Now see here! <laughs> This is a funny quest. Kind of awkward being in the middle of a, of a lover spat, though. One hour later, okay. In the streets, huh? Do you not even understand how frustrating this is, you colossal oaf? This is exactly what I hate about you. Fine, hate me! I'll still sleep like a baby knowing I'm not an unreasonable hag like you! Vice, what do I do? You turn on your heel and walk away as fast as your legs can carry you, my good lad. That's it. I have had enough. Instead of belittling me, why don't you get a proper job? Everyone in the neighborhood treats me like dirt, and it's all because of my unemployed slob of a husband. Uh, actually, I have a job now. Wait, you what? Oh no. You're kidding. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's great! Well, I sort of wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, you big silly Billy. Well, this calls for a celebration. Come on, I'm going to bake you a nice apple pie. God, this relationship is so toxic. But my bridge, the canal or whatever, the canal, the, the canal is not a bridge. I have no idea what just transpired, but it has utterly exhausted me. Well, looks like they made up, so all's well that ends well? In the course of all that madness, I have forgotten why we even came here in the first place. Oh heck, the canal! We need to ask him about the canal! Oh yeah, I just realized, I forgot to say, 
Um, last time when I was doing the riddle in the Force of Myths, and I was stuck on the one that's like 4 in the morning, 2 in noon, and 3. Um, so, I knew that riddle. That is a very, very common riddle. Where it's when you're a baby, you crawl on all fours. When you're, in a, when you're like an adult, you walk on two legs. And when you're old, you walk on three because you have a cane. But I basically got confused because it said... Um, it said like morning, noon, and night. So I was thinking in the day, like, okay, why would you walk like that in the daytime? But no, the, the day is supposed to correspond to different points of your life. Um, and th yeah, that's what confused me. My girlfriend corrected me, or my fiance co uh, corrected me, and I was like, yeah, no, that's that's just how the, the riddle goes. And I'm like, that's a weird way to put it. Why wouldn't they just say, like, different stages of your life? But, whatever, I don't know. I'm dumb. Not good with riddles. I can't thank you enough for all your help. Uh, sure, but listen, we need to talk to you about the canal. All right! That's why you came here in the first place, huh? Well, now that my love life is rolling in clover again, I'd be more than happy to get going on the canal work. Okay, cool. So, that's- that's that it. This was exhausting. Tell me about it. Anyway, let's go give Popola an update. I wonder what happens if you ran. Do you just then be like- and do you then just run back and everything's fine anyway, and you're like, Oh yeah, sorry we ran away, but I need you to work on the canal. I'm not sure. Four? Four. The couple with the red bags were a strange pair indeed. It boggles the mind to think their relationship can persist despite such intense squabbling. Well, they looked pretty happy in the end, at least. Maybe the secret to living a happy life is sharing your feelings, even when they're sort of mean and weird. If you adopt such a strategy, I may leave for groceries one day and never return. <laughs> Vice is gonna go get some milk and never come home. Ow. Sorry, Boar. This place is always so narrow. I always ram the Boar's face into the wall. Going through this area. Alright, so at least we've completed a few more side quests now. I'm sure there's no chicken eggs. Doesn't appear to be any. Uh, incomplete quests. So, yeah, we still got... Letter to the Lover. Oh, but we have the Runaway Sun we can turn in right now. Right here. Hey there. Your son come back yet? No, I haven't seen him. Where could he be? He's in Seafront. Or he was, until he ran away again. Oh, crud. Let me guess. Did he tell you an elaborate story and then ask for help? That boy is... Well, he's a bit of a dirty liar. I probably should have mentioned that. So that whole story was a setup. He sent us on a wild goose chase and then gave us the slip. Since I cannot imagine you letting this go, perhaps we should return to Seafront? There may still be a lead or two left to pursue. Good idea. We can't let him get away with this. <sighs> What's wrong? How can a son bring so much despair to his family? He seems completely ignorant of the pain he has caused. It's deplorable. I love it when you sound like a grumpy old man, Vice. Perhaps I only sound that way because I have existed since time immemorial. How old are you anyway? Hmm. You know, I'm not exactly sure. They say memory loss is a sign of old age. Well, it's still preferable to being a deplorable liar like that son. Alright, looks like we got some stuff to harvest over here. I guess I can do this really quickly. We got a flower, beans, and some melons. And boom. There we go. We're good. Hi, chickens. Why can't I get your chicken eggs ever? Or are you also the ones that hide your, hide your eggs? Alright, let's go turn in the popola. The canal should be good now. And then, uh... We can go check out, uh, the Force of Myths, and do those, uh, last two quests there. With the two villagers that are still stuck in their dream. Alright, up here. And let's go see Popola. Popola! Goodness, 
It sounds like the canal repairman had quite the problem on his hands. I'm glad everything turned out all right. Thank you so much for your help. Don't mention it. I'm looking forward to seeing how the canal turns out. If you need anything else from us, just say the word. Okay. Hey, wait. Huh? I almost forgot. Yona is looking for you. Huh? She said she needed something from you. Time to go play Big Brother for a bit, huh? I guess so. Thanks, Pobla. Alright, well, I'm gonna go do the Forest of Myth stuff first, I think. That just seems like a good idea to me. So, yeah, we'll go take care of that first. New Year's birthday, but I had a party by myself. That's cool. Parties by yourself can be fun, too. You get all the cake and all the alcohol if you choose to have alcohol to yourself. Alright, so yeah, we want to go to the Forest of Myth now. I think that was... Yeah, that was over here. We go to the top left of the screen. Boom, 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 boom. I've got venison, too. I wonder where the quest is that's going to ask me about venison. Or did... I don't think the the Kine Kine made a stew one time. Did that require venison? I don't remember. All right, come on, boar. Wow, that uh, that shade flew. All right, we gotta go up here. I'll grab this because it might be some more silver ore. Yay! I suppose we could go check in with the, the brothers, too, see if we can upgrade our weapons at all. Because boy, would it be nice if we could. The boar is so cute. I love the boar. More silver ore. Cool. And then we just jump down here, and this is the way to the Forest of Myth. Yeah, I would like to upgrade some of my weapons. I, I don't know if I'll upgrade all of the weapons, just because that requires a crazy amount of grinding. I would like to read all the stories for them, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it would require a crazy amount of grinding. But we will see. I will make an attempt, because I would like to see their stories, because some of them are pretty interesting. Alright, the other villagers. We gotta fix you guys. What's up? This person must be dreaming too. It would appear that way, yes. Let's go. I say I'm very excited to go back there. That dream world sort of creeps me out. Perhaps you should spend less time complaining and more time getting on with the mission. Time for more riddles that I won't be able to solve. Yeah, yeah. Or I will solve, but in the wrong way. I breathe air scented with death and resist the urge to laugh. I breathe air scented with death and resist the urge to laugh, for I know it will sound like the words of a madman. How long have I been in this fresh hell? My box- oh, I thought that was one of the- <laughs> I thought that was a riddle. My box, my prison, is tucked beneath a stairway in the long unused catacombs of some infinite castle. Outside I hear the sounds of a funeral dirge that plays without end. Light has no place here. Wind is a forgotten friend. I pray for death to come, but he forsakes me. Time passes and eternity slips by in a single tick of the clock. Wow, so you're... You are still alive, but were put into a coffin in a catacomb? That sounds horrible. Ugh. Someone knocks on my prison. Anyone there? I hear an unfamiliar voice say. My savior. I claw at the door of my jail, embedding thick splinters under my ragged nails. I scream for help, I laugh, I sob. Surely this is a product of my adult mind. Surely it cannot be true. Help me, I cry, for the love of all gods, help me! Impossibly, I hear the sound of a lock being torn out and falling to the floor. As the door slowly creaks open, I have just enough time to see a silver-haired boy in a floating book before the light pours inside. My eyes, accustomed to blackness, explode with pain, and I am forced to turn away. Who are you? I ask, shaking hands covering my face. How have you come to this place? I am Grimoire Vice. This is near. Long have we been searching for you. Now come, stand, we shall awaken from this nightmare together. The one that is near extends his hand and pulls me from the cell. Though my eyes are slow to adjust to freedom, my ears are as keen as ever and they recognize the staccato sounds of heavy rain. I never thought to hear that again, I whisper. Would that this were such a ter- well, not such a terrible storm, said Gunnar Weiss. Look at your feet. 
I force my eyes open and see water pulling around my ankles and lapping at my shins. There's so much of it. Yes, and more comes with each moment we delay. If we do not make good of our escape, we shall all drown in this castle. We know you are weak, but you are our only hope to survive this place. Time, that long-forgotten friend, made itself known again. I nodded my head and swore to my rescuers. Swore to save my rescuers, no matter the cost. The castle catacombs are a maze, twisting upon themselves like the endless entrails of a giant. I s went down the dim corridors and proceed north. Uh, yeah? This is like a choose-your-own-adventure now, I guess? At the end of the corridor, I find a row of 20 gorgeous canopied beds resting atop a carpet of velvet. All are covered in a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. Ugh, gotta readjust in my seat here. Okay. Searching for the door to the next room, I come upon a shapeless mass of gray matter. It has been shoved against the side of the wall, and despite my fever, I think I see the outlines of a door just behind. When I reach out a finger and touch a piece of the mass, it turns to dust and drift away, drifts away on the wind. Realization slowly dawns, and I fall to my knees and weep. Corpses. I face a mountain of charred and crumbling corpses. I look from it to the beds and back again until the horror dawns full upon me. Someone has piled these corpses into a tower and set them ablaze, yeah. Whether they were alive or dead, I do not know. Insanity will not permit me to consider the proposition further. I make a sound, whether scream or laughter, I cannot be certain, and my mind grants me merciful blackness, and I find myself opening the door and leaving that most terrible of rooms. This is like Yoko Taro's opportunity to, to like, show off his short story skills. Squint down the dim corridors. Um, we went north last time. How about east? Uh, west? East. <laughs> west. East. West. Yep, I'm just going in circles. South. And proceed north. The water has risen to my chin and now laps greedily at my mouth and nose. You dumb best shouts near. He surely desires to say more, but the rest of his insult is cut short by the rising water. Grimoire Vice, wet and tattered, floats on the water's surface. It is already too late for him. This wasn't this wasn't how it's supposed to end. I died. Continue. <laughs> That's funny. I lost to the choose your own adventure. And Nier called me a dumb bastard. Wait, wait, whoa, I have to actually start over from here? Crazy. Okay, I didn't expect that. Huh. Okay, well maybe don't just randomly pick directions when you're going through the maze this time like an idiot. This person it's Yeah. We're gonna enter the villager's dream and do some do some stuff. We are. Okay. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah. Blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah. Proceed north. Alright. Yep. Da -da 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 -da. We've already read this. Okay. Let's uh, go to the south. Squint down the corridors and proceed north. And. Proceed east. Okay. And then we go north. And then we keep going north. The end of the path. The waters rise to my waist, exhausting me both physically and spiritually. I pray that this is the way out. Eventually, I can stand the side of the waters no longer and some turn my eyes upward. I imagine my surprise when I see a series of paintings hanging on the faded plaster wall. Each depicts a person in the prime of life, clad in clothing of the highest quality. The styles, however, are strange to me, leading, to me, leading me to believe that these people had lived long, long ago. One subject wears an outfit that particularly catches my eye. It's constructed of a thin, breezy cloth and decorated with a motif of flowers and birds. While encircling the figure's waist is a leather belt of the most perfect construction, it is a stunning costume even by modern standards. As I gaze at the portrait, I'm stuck, struck by a desire to touch it with my own hands. And as I extend a single finger to the painting, I'm gripped by a most unpleasant feeling. Staring closely at the image, I see it bend and warp into the shape of another finger. Something behind the picture is pointing at me. Is it another prisoner? A fellow inmate trapped for eternity in this place? I cannot let it pass, and so I seize the portrait with both hands and throw it into the water. The wall is hollow behind the painting, and inside I can make out a body. Whether or not this is a prisoner, 
there would be no rescue. The poor soul is long dead. Scraps of clothing lie on the floor around the bones. Only a small amount of the fabric has survived, but it features the same delicate designs that were depicted in the portrait. I had been admiring a row of corpses blocked from view by portraits by each victim at their pinnacle. Yeah. Enough. Shielding my eyes, I paddle forward through the water. Squint down the dim corridors and proceed south. So we went south. Um, and then let's keep going south. Squint down the dim corridors and go west. Water has risen to my chin and now lives greedily in my mouth and nose. You dumb bast- Ah, my god. But I- but I tried, I did. Why's it got to be a choose-your-own-adventure maze? I went the correct way, right? I mean, I didn't- I assumed the bad thing to do is to, like, turn around and go back the way you came, and then you just waste a bunch of time. Like, you want to keep moving forward, and I thought that's what I was doing there. Ugh. Alright, I squint down the dim corridors and proceed south. Let's just try going east this time. At the end of the Grey Hall, I find myself in a Grey Hall with the only sounds of rain for comfort. The waterlogged red carpet squishes beneath my feet as I approach the center of the room. Once there, I behold a beautiful dining table upon which rests china and silver of the finest construction, as well as the remains of a fantastic feast. As my eyes continue to adjust, I see many chairs surrounding the table, each holding a dinner guest. Noticing movement, I approach the chair at the table's head, but as the truth of the matter dawns on me, I recoil in horror. The host of the feast is a corpse, as are all the invited guests. An army of foul, wriggling insects have made homes in their remains, and this is the movement I saw. This once splendid feast was now nothing more than a requiem for the damned. I take a moment to steady my shaking hands, then slowly back away from the table. Desperate to lose sight of the abomination before me, my gaze lands on the chairs upon which the dead were seated. This is a mistake, for the chairs proved to be even more terrible than the feast itself. Each one is covered in a layer of spikes that run from the seat up the back and down the arms. This explains the color of the carpet beneath my feet. I can only pray that the unfortunate diners were dead when the meal began. For if not, it is a simple task to envision the agonized screams that must have sprung forth from their mouths. My mind grasps frantically at the possibility that these souls have committed some terrible crime for which, this, for which this was punishment. Though in truth, I suspect they had committed no crime at all. There would be no, tom no tomorrow for these unfortunates. This was their last supper. Squint down the dim corridors. Oh god. Uh... North? Against all hope, we make it to the front door. Oh god, thank you. Break it down, someone cries, and so I give myself to the effort. In tandem with Nier and Grimoire Vice, I slam my body against the thick, sturdy door. On the third try, it gives away, and we find ourselves sprawled on the ground outside the castle. The storm is in retreat. The clouds above are still dark and foreboding, but to the west I can see a thin shimmer of sunlight trying to break through. How can I thank you, I cry as tears join the rain on my cheeks. I would surely have died in there. Looking down, I no suddenly notice that my dress is in tatters and sheepishly try to cover my exposed skin. Your dress, asks twice, then you are a woman, madam. I am. I proffer the two a smile. I suppose that comes as something of a surprise, seeing as how I only exist in the form of words. I can see that the one known as Nier is disappointed that the torn dress will be given no further description. But he hides it well. With a nod and a shrug, the three of us set <laughs> forth to our awakening. This point that the torn dress will be given no further description. Is Nier- was Nier being horny? I mean, he is young, I guess. He's at the age. But behind us, an awakening of another kind is taking place. Black smoke fills the abandoned castle, providing the countless damned souls inside with their final shroud. After a moment, the castle's windows shatter with a mighty roar. A fresh breeze blows through the hallways and corridors, clearing the smoke away for good. As we watch in awe, uncountable black shadows slowly flicker to life, crossing to and fro in front of the broken windows. The castle's dead have awakened to their new life as shades. Hmm. Hmm. You have anything to say about that? Uh, hopefully there will be no labyrinth next time. Yeah, hopefully. I hear that. Hey. Thank you so much for saving me. I never want to have a dream like that again. Yeah, that would be an awful dream to have, to be fair. That sounds horrible. Alright, so there's one more of you. And another victim. This work certainly is trying. 
I figured a book like you would be into all this word stuff, Vice. Even I have my exceptions. Now let's be off. Let's try and do this one too, this episode. We got 15 minutes left. A colony of massive sculptures was visible in the distance, their tall forms scraping against the sky. Vice and Nier had never seen such a sight, and their eyes widened as they tried to take it all in. Those buildings must be huge if we can see them from this far away. What do you think, Vice? As Vice considered his answer, the sun beat down on them with renewed ferocity. Perhaps they are some manner of mirage, he said. Under this heat, a mirage or two would hardly be an unexpected sight. Nier nodded and wiped the sweat off his brow, leaving a trail of sand in its place. He thought he'd never been so thirsty. The ancient road on which they walked was black and cracked with age. Here and there, thin wisps of grass pushed up through the rocky surface, as if defying those who had laid this material down over their home. The heat reflecting from the road made Nier lightheaded. His feet hurting, he crouched down to rest. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is someone playing a joke on us or not? Or what? The complaining had already begun. Vice tried to le not let his eyes roll too much. A joke, he said. No, no joke. This road leads to the City of Art. Perhaps the path itself is simply some manner of grand artistic art work. You don't sound very sure of yourself there. Perhaps not, but thinking of it in this way might make it easier for you to bear. Nier glanced at Weiss Vice's grinning face, shook his head, and resumed walking. As time passed, Nier's feet grew more painful, and his throat drier than he thought possible. He tried not to look further than the next step ahead, because the bright sunlight made him hesitant to trust his own senses. We are definitely getting closer, said Vice in an effort to cheer his companion. Yes, this much is certain. Encouraged, Nier lifted his gaze. Suddenly he stopped walking, choosing his head to stand in the middle of the road with his mouth and eyes wide open and his finger pointing in the distance. Water, he cried, it's water. Water, asked Vice, preposterous, I don't see any water. Over there, just ahead of us. Look, the sun's reflecting off of it. Without waiting for a response, Nier sprang to life and bounded toward the site. What in the... There was no water. There was nothing but sand in every direction. You saw a mirage. Nier closed his eyes and sighed as Vice floated up behind him and chuckled softly. I believe this is known as a mirage, he said. Many a desert traveler has spoken of such things. Nier shook his head, bewildered. Suddenly he pointed off in the distance, his eyes wide once more. Wait, there it is! I just missed it! Look! It's right there! Nier sprinted off again, leaving Vice with no other choice but to follow. After a few minutes of running, Nier came to a halt. I could have sworn it was right around here. Confused, he put his hands up to his eyes and rubbed them vigorously. As soon as he stopped, he noticed a blue, shimmering pool of clear water just over the next rise. With a shout, he bounded off in search of it. The chase continued for nearly an hour, until an exasperated vice finally floated up to Nier and struck him in the face with his cover. Enough, you blithering idiot! Stop this at once! There is no water here. Nier's face clouded. There isn't? There is not, and perhaps next time you will listen to me when I tell you as much. Vice paused for a moment, then continued speaking in a slightly kinder tone. However, I suppose this mad chase was not altogether wasted. It seems we have arrived in the City of Art. Nier looked up. Stretched out before him, there was a row of impossibly tall sculptures. Their journey was at an end. They're huge, cried Nier, completely forgetting the heat and pain of the past few hours. I've never, even, I've never seen anything so big. Each sculpture was formed from roughly the same shape, a tall rectangle that stretched up towards the sky, but that is where the similarities ended. Most were covered with panes of glass that reflected light in a thousand directions, while others seemed to be nothing but frames of steel. Some had tall spires on their tops, while others possessed triangular caps. What kind of city is this, said Nier? Where are the people? Where are the houses? Perhaps the land is intended exclusively for artistic use. The debate continued as they made their way through the city. Miracles of artistry were everywhere. Great iron crates with wheels sat silent on steel rails. Trains? Beautifully carved works with lights of red, amber, and green dangled over every street, so they're in like a town. And they were running through the desert on the road before. As they moved away from the massive sculptures, they found a great array of smaller ones. Some were covered in glass or brick, but many were composed of materials they had never before encountered. The sheer variety of colors and styles was staggering. 
Unable to find a theme or purpose to the abstract works around them, Nier and Weiss eventually fell silent. On the outskirts of the city, they discovered three sculptures in the shape of humans. Nier uttered a sigh of relief as he approached them. Finally, I was getting tired of modern art. The three statues were indistinguishable except for a single word chiseled into their right arms. One read Alpha, one read Beta, and the final one read Gamma. As Nier moved to touch the Nier statue, a bird flew from the top of one of the sculptures. Alighting on the statue's shoulder, it emitted a brief, beautiful song that took the form of words. Only one form is real, the others are false. The real form will always- Oh no! Not Liar's Dilemma! Oh no, the real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. With that, the bird disappeared as a phone cue, the three statues shuddered to life, acquiring color and form as they began to breathe. Hey, look at that, said Nier. They're alive. The triplets bowed low before Nier. Please, said Alpha. You have to get me out of this nightmare. I am real. Stop lying, said Beta. He turned to Nier and threw his hands in the air. Alpha's a fake, you know. I'm the real one. What a load of crap, said Gamma. Beta's a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Okay, so... Alpha just said you have to get me out of this nightmare. I'm real. Beta said stop lying, Alpha's a fake, you know, I'm the real one. And Gamma said what a load of- Beta's a fake, everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. So if Alpha's telling the truth, you have to get me out of this nightmare, I'm real. That would mean that Beta is lying, uh, which would make Gamma Telling the truth would mean Gamma's telling the truth. Um, so if we go with that assumption, so at the end of this nightmare, I'm real, and Beta says that Alpha's a fake, and you know I'm the real one, and you're saying Beta's a fake. Everyone knows I'm the only real one around here. Okay, but wait, Gamma did not say Beta was lying. Gamma said Beta was a fake. Engineers through his hand. Alpha's a fake, you know, I'm the real one. Oh, well, never mind. It doesn't matter because they said two of them are lying and only one's telling the truth. So it doesn't matter who says who's lying in this particular case. Uh, Alpha's a fake. Beta's a fake. The respective pleas given. The three statues return to their frozen state of silence once again envelops the city. When you consider all the statements, only one of them could be the real thing, said Vice. Nier referred his eyebrows and considered his answer. The others are false. The real form will always speak the truth. The false ones will only speak lies. I wish I could see their stuff again. Um, so, basically, Alpha said that they're real. Beta said Alpha's fake. And Gamma said that... Betas is a, is a liar. It's fake. So... If Alpha just says I'm real, and Beta says Alpha's a liar, or Alpha's a fake, then that would mean Alpha's lying. And then... Oh god. <laughs> the real one is Beta. So Beta just said Alpha's a fake, and I'm the real one. And if Alpha is the fake, that would make sense, because you only say that you're real. And then Gamma says that you're lying, or you, that you're a fake. But if Gamma's lying, and Alpha's lying, then that would make what Beta said true. So, Beta's saying that Alpha, yeah, and you're the real one, that would be true. Alpha, if you're telling the truth, let's see how that works. Alpha telling the truth, I'm real. Which would basically just mean that you two are lying? Which would that work? You're saying Alpha says I'm real. Beta says Alpha's a fake and is lying. Gamma says... Okay, see that wouldn't work because then Gamma would be right. About Beta. So that's not possible. And if Gamma's telling the truth... Gamma says Beta's a, a lying. And, uh, Alpha says, I'm the real one, which would be a lie. Uh...
No, it has to be beta, I think. Real one is beta. The Nier's voice betrayed a notable lack of confidence. He was relieved to see Vice nodding at him. Yeah. If Alpha were telling the truth, began Vice in the dry tones of a lecturer, Beta and Gamma would be fakes. But in that case, Gamma's claim that Beta is a fake would be the truth, even though Gamma is a liar. Therefore, that theory crumbles. Now let us presume that Gamma spoke the truth. That means Alpha and Beta are liars. In this situation, however, Beta is calling Alpha a liar, which would leave us with two statues telling us telling the truth. Yeah. This is basically how you have to go about Liar's Dilemma. You have to look at each one and be like, okay, well, what happens if you're right? Finally, let us assume that Beta is telling the truth. If so, Alpha and Gamma's lives would make sense. Therefore, Beta must be real. As Vice finished his explanation, Alpha and Gamma crumbled soundlessly into dust, while Beta sprang to life once more. Congratulations, villager, said Vice in a cheerful voice. The time to awaken has arrived. Thank you for saving me, cried the villager. He dropped to his knees and bowed his head as low as it could go before an uncomfortable near pulled him to his feet. Why did you have a dream like this? asked Vice. Have you been to this city before? The villager slowly looked around at the bizarre objects and sculptures that dotted the landscape and shook his head. I... I don't think so. I mean, it's impossible, right? There's no way I could have ever been to a place like this, but at the same time, I feel like I've seen it before. Deja vu, muttered Nier, just like the mayor. A vague sense of unease that struck Nier during the mayor's dream spread once more through his mind. So these people have apparently seen the real world before. Like the, the, the you know, our world, basically, with stoplights and cars and stuff. And they remember that, but why are they still here now? That was rough. I am positive I have seen that place before. Okay, that's enough. Don't need you getting all weird on me too. Okay, there. Now all the villagers can wake up, right? Yeah, there's only three people that live here, apparently. Yes, if the mayor's assumption was correct. I think I've had enough wordplay to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You're telling me. Anyway, let's go see the mayor. Alright, mayor. Let's go check in with you. We've done it! Wait, was that... Did we have to do that? Okay. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Here. I have something for you. Obtain the one-handed sword Faith. Oh, cool. Wow, this looks valuable. I can really have it? Of course. It's apparently a weapon of some renown, but we have little use for it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you again. For everything. Cool. So, I, I don't think you have to actually get this weapon from here. I think in the second part of the game you can just buy this weapon. But if you do that, then you get the weapon for free. So... It was called... Faith. Uh... Okay, it's very light. And does close damage to Beastbane. Let's read the story. There was once a famous poet in a land to the far, far east. Now, in his twilight years, his ability had withered... ...such that he could no longer craft a single stanza or a verse. The poor poet spent every moment racked with sorrow for what had been lost, but one day a monk appeared at his side, gently placed a blade in his hand, and imparted the following words. Who knows? Quip. Okay, so this weapon's very fast. It's very, very, very fast. Um, I might like Beastbane more just because of the extra magic power we get from that. Um, so let's go back to Beastbane. But that is a pretty good weapon. I'll say that. Uh, let's go ahead and get back to town first. And then I'll, uh, save my game and end this episode off. Yeah, there we go. We've done the little, uh, side quests in the village. The Forest of Myths. Saved all the villagers we have. Alright. Boar friend, I need you to get me back home. You're a nice boar friend, as opposed to that pissed off boar friend over there. Goodbye, boar friend. I fought boar with boar. Dun, 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 Hi, sheep. Hi, sheep. What is happening here? Why are they running around like they're on fire? What? Are you guys good? What? Are, are you good? That was weird. They were like running around and smoking, and it, it like forced my boar to stop when I got there. Very weird. 
Not sure what the deal with that was. Evelyn Pueblo came to keep me company today. How exciting. But yeah, I think we'll uh, go ahead and end this episode of Near off here. I'm that rhymed. Uh, I just want to go over here and hit up the save point. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time.